This is the big question in which we tackle the major news story of the day. A report by the Campaign for Common Sense has revealed that the BBC is allowing a left-wing politically correct bias to infuse the storylines of drama series. After reviewing more than a year's output of BBC drama, the organisation suggested that the Beeb was indulging in its own form of social engineering by over-representing minorities and lecturing viewers on topics including climate change. In a statement, a spokesperson for the Campaign for Common Sense said, The BBC needs to understand that not everyone signs up to a worldview where the bad guys are the police, Brexit and Conservatives. This latest review comes after a separate report accused the broadcaster of rewriting history by using documentaries to promote a woke agenda. But what do you think? Is the BBC promoting a partisan agenda? Well, joining me now to debate this is director of the New Culture Forum, Peter Whittle, and former BBC journalist, Martin Bell. Thank you both ever so much for joining me today. Peter, I just want to come to you first Thanks, ab- about this. What do you feel about this, um, this report and this suggestion that the BBC is partisan when it comes to these ideological issues? Well, uh, I'm almost tempted to say, is the Pope Catholic? I mean, the fact is, Andrew, that the bias in the BBC, its worldview, which it sees as being just the kind of view that any civilised person would have, uh, it's not a a party uh, uh, partisan view, it is a political partisan view, that now goes through all of its output. It has done for a very long time, I'd say, in a very extreme way for about the past 20 years. Uh, I think when it comes to news, people are far more aware of it now. Where it's far more insidious um, is in the areas in which, uh, for example, you you just highlighted in drama, in comedy, uh, in documentary making. And I think these two reports um, are very timely, but at the same time, they're not actually saying anything new. Um, Fact is, this has been the case. The New Culture Forum has looked at this over the past 10 years on numerous occasions. Um, What is important about this? I would say that people would say, well, in fact, don't watch the BBC then. We have to pay for it to watch it. That is the crucial difference, I think, between that and, say, like ITV or Channel 5 or Channel 4 or any of these others. Um, Effectively, you know, we have to pay for this propaganda. And I think that it's getting to the point now where things are becoming unwatchable. OK, Martin, Martin Bell, can I bring you in on this? Is Peter Whittle uh, being too strong when he describes this as propaganda? The BBC that I hear being spoken of here and spoken of by this campaign for common sense that I've never heard of before, I do not recognise as the BBC for which I worked uh, and for which I actually risked my life all over the world. It has a reach which is widely admired. It is admired all over the world. And I think as the national broadcast, who are extremely fortunate to have it. Fair enough. Peter, would you like to respond to that? I mean, specifically, can I just ask, it is difficult, isn't it, for the BBC, because they get accused of bias from the left and from the right, you know, depending on the viewer's individual perspective. Isn't that just the same in this case? No, no, no. It's a- a- absolutely not, Andrew. Uh, I think that, you know, first of all, you can see it in viewing figures. You know, there's a saying, isn't there, go won't go broke. I think that we're to an extent seeing that with the BBC as well. Um, you know, we've looked at programmes in the New Culture Forum from, you know, the early 2000s. There was a, a drama series called Spooks, for example, which was so biased in the way that it presented the threat to British society uh, that it was almost laughable. Um, and I think that what I would say to Martin is that, yes, that might well have been the case for the BBC in terms of reporting Uh, No one is doubting that it has a reputation worldwide. Uh, But there comes a point where you think, well, you know, the worldview, which is left wing, which is put forward by the BBC, is this thing reformable? Could it be changed? And frankly, I've been sort of like, you know, hammering on about this for long enough now to think, actually, you know what? It can't be changed. Ma- Martin uh, Bell, it you- can't be reformed. It can't be reformed. The people Peter, let me just let me just bring Martin in a moment there. Who produce them and direct them, generally speaking, have exactly the same attitude when it comes to Brexit, when it comes to immigration, when it comes to multiculturalism, when it comes to climate change. And I just want to say one thing, Andrew, if I may. There, um, in a way, the way you can tell the bias is 
by what is not on screen. So, for example, the idea that there might be a drama which was in some ways critical of mass migration, you know, that is inconceivable on the BBC. OK, but let's see what Martin has to say about that, because I think uh, Martin Bailey make a very good point that th this is an institution that has been venerated for a long, long time. It's done some incredible work. Do you accept that a lot of this, this kind of issues that Peter is describing there, a lot of these have sort of escalated over the past eight to ten years, and really this is a very modern problem, and that maybe the BBC should be looking at uh, trying to establish greater diversity of opinion uh, rather than just focusing on, focusing on other forms of diversity? I don't recognize this caricature of the BBC. Society has changed. I joined it in 1962. Society has changed immeasurably. It has changed with those times. Uh, and it's a proper news channel. It's not an opinion channel. I was under no political pressure, and I did a lot of politics for 34 years for one thing or the other. The only pressure I was under, which I did resent, was not to be allowed to show the real world effects of war because they said that would upset the viewers. That's the only pressure I ever felt I was under. So I don't recognize this as an issue. Do you, do you accept, though, that the, the, the kind of things you're describing there are specifically related to news and, and, and journalism, but actually this issue is, is more to do with, with drama and the cultural side of the BBC, whereas they might be m better at handling uh, or being impartial when it comes to the political side, maybe when it comes to the cultural side, the concerns that Peter is raising, there are failures. I mean, even Tim Davey has said that there are failures in that respect. There will always be failures in any organisation, even yours, because people are human and human fail from time to time. But I think if the BBC realises that its audience is getting collectively unhappy, it always adjusts and it will do so again. Look, the Alexander Palace I joined in 62 was all white. There were no minorities. Now minorities are all over. And that was bound to happen. And it doesn't bother me at all. But obviously the BBC has adjusted and will adjust. And we're lucky to have it. So, uh, Peter, can I ask you, you about can't... that? Because maybe, is there a case here to be made? As Martin says, there was at some point definitely a need for some sort of push for diversity within the BBC. But maybe now we're seeing what is what has been termed by Douglas Murray, for instance, as an overcorrection. Uh, do you think, may, and that well, maybe, course. as Martin suggests, it will recorrect itself again, and this is just part of the process. Why? Why will it recorrect re itself? I don't. I don't see that that follows at all. I mean, in terms of uh, the minorities, yes, of course, hugely disproportionately rep overrepresented now. Uh, that's not just on the BBC. Uh, ask anyone about ads on ITV, for example. I mean, that's a whole different uh, area um, where people no longer actually recognise what they are. You know, the country they're meant to be living in. Um, but I think that the the crucial point here is is that Martin is talking all the time about news, and you know, I think the news is biased at the BBC. I think perhaps when he joined it, it wasn't. But I think that far more important because it's far more underhand is the kind of bias and the kind of subjects which are chosen, the way they're represented in drama, in comedy, and in the non-news areas. So, as I said, you know, it's become a bit of a cliche that, you know, panel, comedy panel shows on BBC radio are almost all left wing. You must know this yourself, Andrew. I mean, you know, it, it is one of the uh, biggest complaints of uh, comedians that one hears about. But as I said earlier, and I think this is a crucial thing, when it comes to the kind of drama that the BBC was rightly, and I grew up on it, Martin, I mean, you know, I really did. It, the BBC was rightly known as being the absolute benchmark. Uh, it no longer is because the ideological agenda now actually gets in the way of good drama. Well, can so I ask, effectively, can I ask... they have to keep making the points this is a good person. This is a bad yes, person. Yes, I understand. I understand. We, we are running short on time, so I just want to come to Martin Bell just finally and just to say, and I accept completely, Martin, that you, you don't recognise the depiction of the BBC that Peter is offering. But leaving that aside, on principle, do you accept the view that the BBC uh, should be striving to represent all types of opinions and ideas throughout the country? And, and perhaps there is a failing, given, that, uh, given where it is based, given the type of people that are employed there, that, as you say, they're human beings, so by necessity, they're up representing one side more weightily than the other. No, I don't recognise this caricature at all. Uh, of course, I mean, GB News Not clearly has an interest in this of the BBC because you're a rival. You'd love to have its ratings, you'd love to have its reach. Uh, may maybe you will. Um, is it really the biggest question of the day? 
that the BBC is allegedly biased? I absolutely believe it isn't. OK. I mean, I don't consider it the necessarily I, the biggest story of the day, but it's, it's a story we're responding to that was in, that I was in the papers. I would say that the cultural effect of the BBC is now one that undermines Britain, whereas in the past, maybe it celebrated Britain. But by a kind of chipping away and a chipping away, as these two reports show, often in very small ways, it's demoralising to the culture. This is the national broadcaster. The licence fee should be scrapped and maybe that will induce them to have a bit more well, common sense. I'm going to have to stop you there, Peter, because we are out of time. But thank you to my guests, the director of the New Culture Forum, Peter Whittle, and former BBC journalist Martin Bell.